Oh, hello there and welcome back to the Hull City Fan Central YouTube channel where today I do have the QPR versus Hull City prediction video. So I've been away for a few days, so that's why there was the lack of videos um, for the past few days. But I'm back now and I'm here to predict the QPR versus Hull City game. So I'll be going over um, my predicted line for Hull City, a bit of information about both sides coming into this game and then also to finish it off, my official score prediction and who I think will score. So we'll first start it off with my predicted Hull City lineup. So after the 3 2 win at the weekend, I've gone for Matt Ingram to retain his place in goal. It was needed. He made some fantastic saves in the game. Um, basically kept the uh, kept the uh, only two goals there. Um, so yeah, Matt Ingram in the goal for me. Moving on to the back four, I know we played a back five or a three back and then wing backs that were playing um, quite high. Um, I've gone for back four. There was a lot of defensive mistakes in the uh, Coventry game and QPR. They don't. They don't have. Um, uh, they, they have quite a, a solid attack, so it's probably best if we do play a four back. Just keep it safe defensively. Uh, so I've gone for Louis Coyle, our captain, uh, to play on the right-hand side. Although Cyrus Christie is meant to be coming in uh, to replace Louis Coyle on the rotations. He only came on for a minute against Coventry. And I don't think that he could make... I don't think he deserves a spot at the moment starting off. Um, unless there is an injury with Louis Coyle or something. I don't think uh, Christie will come in. Uh, it could come in definitely um, as a substitution later on into the game. Get fresh legs tactical-wise. Uh, get a bit more game time under him. And then possibly come in to replace Louis Coyle in that position. But uh, at the moment, I don't think so. The centre-back partnership of Jacob Greaves. Um, did a, another brilliant performance. And then Tobias Figueiredo. Um, I've not been um, impressed with his performances um, especially as of late, I, he really needs to start picking up. Or I can see Sean McLaughlin um, replacing him, unless sh unless Shot is seeing something here. Um, Tobias, I don't think, has actually gelled that well into the defensive line. He's been making some great tackles, don't get me wrong, but in the grand scheme of the games, in the grand scheme of what our plan is, I haven't been seeing too much being done towards that um, from his point of view. But defensively, he has been somewhat there. Moving on to the left back now, Callum Elder. So no Brandon Fleming still. He's out injured and um, could be for a few more weeks still. So Callum Elder retains his spot. Uh, another um, solid performance. The, the link up of him and Louis Coyle on Saturday was actually uh, somewhat incredible. Flicking the balls in onto uh, Oscar Estupinian, which I'll, I'll get on to him in a bit, but uh, fantastic work from the both of them. Moving into the midfield three now, we do have Ryan Woods making his second start, in my opinion, uh, in this game. He had a fantastic uh, full debut at the MKM Stadium on Saturday, um, and he, he isn't, he's proven himself to be a solid player. He's championship proven, and I think that he's just what we need, especially in the times that we're in now, where we do have a lot of injury crisis. So, Ryan Woods, he's come in, he's made uh, two very strong impacts in two um, very different games and uh, I want to see him make another impact in this game. Moving on to the 50 grand man, Regan Slater. Uh, another solid performance, another uh, game where we're thinking, how did this man only cost us 50 grand? Um, but yeah, Sheffield United are in the mud. So <laughs> um, yeah, 50 grand man, Regan Slater starting here. I'd like him to do a bit more attacking wise. I, I understand that uh, that's not his position mainly, but, but considering that our midfield three, if it does play um, as what I predict, is very defensively. I'd like him to see him push on a bit more and help some of the balls through the middle, especially now that we're missing side Manesh and Tufan. Um, some of the some of the midfield work it needs to be worked on. Uh, I understand Ryan Woods been doing quite a bit of that. But I'd like to be, see Regan side to getting a bit more work in there, um, more than he has been doing so far. And then alongside them to Alfie Jones in the midfield still. So he came in originally to play Seri. Seri should be back for the Sheffield United game. There is no word on um, whether he's back for this game. Um, but he should be back for the weekend's fixture against Sheffield United. Um, so I see Alfie Jones keeping his position. 
He's been doing quite nicely, adapting back into that midfield role after having just over a season um, in the back line. So he's been doing nicely. Um, I think he's found his place a bit more in the midfield um, compared to what he was doing in the first game when he was he was further up the pitch than Estu Pinyan. Um, but yeah, I nicely worked from him. Uh, gets a little round of applause for me. <laughs> so then moving on to the attacking line. Now this is where you're going to see a bit of variation. Ryan Longman did come back uh, to make his first appearance after injury um, on Saturday. And it was a somewhat impactful start. Ryan Longman, he came to us from Brighton and he only scores bangers uh, mainly. But uh, I'd like to see him start this one, obviously with uh, two fan out injured. And I would take uh, Ryan Longman over Randall Williams in that position. I understand that um, we played um, Coville on Saturday. He did go off injured, so that's another injury. I'm not sure how severe that injury was. There was no like proper official wording on it. So... Um, I'd like to see Ryan Longman start here, come back, get some fresh game time in, as he is a phenomenal player. He's come to us from Brighton, a Premier League proven side. He's come to us, he's scored brilliant goals, he's assisted brilliant goals last season. I want to see him push on this season and maybe maybe get on the score sheet a bit more than he did, he did do last season. There's only one other man that can... Uh, Go a game where he assists two and then the next game where he doesn't assist any. Benjamin Tete. Um, so yeah, Benjamin Tete played, I think, 90 minutes on Saturday. Uh, unfortunately, not to get on to any of the attacking returns in that game. But he's, he's, he's trying his hardest and he it will pay off eventually. He's definitely not playing in the right position for him. We all know that. Um, it's not until we get the full squad back where we can actually originally look at Tete's starting position and whether he can come into that squad rotation um, over us to Pinyan and then play into the actual master plan that Shot has been building. So Benjamin Tete, he's got to start though. He's a phenomenal uh, player. Just going to keep on building himself throughout the season, I see. And I can see him um, coming through with a few attacking returns, especially later on into the season when we, he does have his um, original position back. Then there's only one man left. Oscar Estupinian, the hat-trick hero. Um, it was three classic poacher finishes. Uh, it's a mental to think now that he is the top goal scorer in the championship. Seven goals in six games. Uh, that, that means that in one month, he has managed to get more goals than Tom Eves managed in the entirety of last season. So that's a fun fact for you, and I do love that fact greatly. Just shows an excellent bit of business from Adjun and Shotter there. Um, fantastic, I can see him pushing on, and I mean, tipping him to um, go to the top goal scorer in the championship is is it a bit too early to say Mitrovic two point oh? I don't think so. I think that he's definitely going to uh, keep on ex uh, excelling, and as soon as we get the full squad back. Um, his attacking returns will come in leaps and bounds with more assists coming towards him. So that's my starting lineup. Let me know down in the comments who you think could possibly come in because as the squad rotation does start coming back in with injuries starting to heal, there's like Tyler Smith and players like that who are coming back and could sneak in somewhere, um, but I don't see them sneaking into the starting eleven. Okay, so moving into a bit of information about both sides coming into this game. We currently do sit third in the table, and uh, if things go well for us tomorrow night, um, i.e. we win and the Sheffield United and Reading game goes to a draw, we could go to the top of the table once again. It's becoming a bit of a doozy, this. Um, but QPR, they're sitting in 11th, not too bad for this stage in the season. Um, they've, they've been doing okay. Uh, so it could be a very, very close-knit match. I can see something maybe coming off in a similar breath to the Preston game um, as I see QPR and Preston playing a similar sort of football this season. Uh, so that could play into uh, how you predict it or how, definitely how the players will play in this game. So moving into a bit of the recent uh, debacles that we've had with QPR. The last game we played um, at their ground was obviously that 1-1 draw last season um, and it was it was a game to remember for a few people obviously Harvey Cartwright got his first ever league star uh, league appearance for Hull City after the Matt Ingram injury hopefully Matt Ingram doesn't go off injured in this game um, which did lead to them conceding uh, to us conceding a goal sorry uh, which did bring it down to a 1-1 draw with Marcus Force scoring for us in the first half uh, one of his uh, very few um, returns for Hall City, and he is now long gone. He was not 
that good of a player um, in the whole plan that we had last season. And I, no one saw him staying and he didn't. He went back to Brentford and I think he's moved on to um, another championship side um, on a permanent deal, I believe. Uh, I'm maybe mistaken on that. But the game to remember from Hull City versus QPR was obviously that 4-0 win that we got back in 2018, I believe, at the MKM Stadium, uh, which saw Grzyski, um Bowen, Bowen blanked in that game. He didn't score one. Um, I think we saw Abel Hernandez grab one. It was his own goal. And um, I'm not sure who else scored, but there was... It was, it was limbs flying in the hope. Well, I say limbs flying. There was about three people in the crowd because obviously it was under the Lambs reign then. Uh, but yeah, a brilliant game. Uh, hopefully we can see something along the lines. Um, maybe not a 4-0. 3-0 I'd, I'd be happy with. Okay, so moving into my official prediction for the game. I do think it's going to be a tight one. I think it will be um, another game where we do share the points. A 1-1 one, one draw. So as I said earlier, th the QPR are playing similar ball to Preston this season. Obviously Preston having... Um, some say a phenomenal start, some say a very poor start, uh, conceding uh, no goals, scoring one and um, winning one, drawing the rest of their games. So very, very uh, mixed bag start for them. But QPR, a bit different to them. They have lost the game already. So who knows if that could feed into uh, maybe us returning with three points back to Hull for Sheffield United uh, or whether it could go the other way and QPR could grab all three. But I do think the points will be shared with a 1-1 draw. Uh, the opening goal coming from the lead man, Oscar Estupinian, making that eight goals in seven games and making that nine um, attacking returns with that one assist that he got um, from Ozan Tufan at the Burnley game. So I do think QPR will reply, though, with a, um equaliser coming in the form of Willock, who is um, QPR's leading goal scorer in this season so far. Only got three for himself, so not, not quite the Colombian masterclass of Oscar Estupinian, but still nothing to be um, shying away from seven games into a season, um, or six games into a season with three uh, goals. It's not too bad. So let me know down in the comments what you think uh, the score will be, who you think will score, and all that sort of jazz coming into this game tomorrow. Um, but yeah, that's it for the Hull City Fan Central YouTube channel. Make sure that you like and subscribe as I will have a match reaction video out tomorrow after the game. So stay tuned for that. But this has been the Hull City Fan Central YouTube channel. Goodbye.